3.7. Wow, I started at 0. 0.5. Hello, lovely people. Today we're going to follow along as I do a six day egg fast. I will be doing three days of an egg fast plus three transitional days, totaling six days. Now, what is an egg fast? An egg fast is when you dedicate a certain amount of days, you decide how many days you're going to do to eating mainly eggs as a protein source. In a little bit, I will give you the rules. But for now, let me tell you that the egg fast has some benefits. And to begin with, the eggs are full of fat, protein, and nutrients, and that's going to help you kickstart a healthy weight loss journey. Will you be losing some weight? You may or you may not but it is going to help you get into deep ketosis, which is going to kickstart your weight loss. Now, to be honest with you, the only times that I have been in deep ketosis is during the neck fast. I'm going to show you my readings on day one, and I'm also going to show you the readings the morning after day six to show you what I mean of being in deep ketosis. Now, the egg fast does have some rules that have been established by the original person who started the egg fast, which is Jimmy Moore, but people, myself included, have modified those rules. Let me show you a set of rules that I have been following. But before I continue with the rules, let me let you know that my name is Celsa and I am Mexican Keto Journey on Instagram, and I invite you to follow me there as I do post my daily meals and anything having to do with my keto life. I post a lot of my stories about anything happening during the day, for example, this week I have been posting about the egg fast and what I will be doing and all that stuff anyway if you are new to my channel I thank you for being here and I invite you to subscribe as I do post weekly keto recipe videos and other videos having to do with my keto journey like this egg fast video if you are not new to my channel I thank you again for being here for coming back and watching my video and the egg fast rules are the following Eggs and cheese are the only source of protein allowed. One tablespoon of butter or other healthy fat per egg consumed. One ounce of cheese per egg consumed. Eat every three to five hours. Must eat at least six eggs per day. Stop eating three hours before bedtime. Eat at least one egg within 30 minutes of waking up. Eat at least one egg even if not hungry. Eggs must be pastured eggs for omega-3 fats and vitamin D and up to three cans of diet soda allowed per day. Now let's continue with the rules that I do not follow. I have done several egg fasts. Now I'm thinking about five or six egg fasts and in each egg fast, I have not followed these rules that I'm about to show you and I have always seen results. So the first rule that I do not follow is I do not wake up and eat an egg 30 minutes after I wake up. I don't, I can't, I don't know. Um, Maybe I could, but I just decide to get my coffee instead. Another rule that I do not follow is to eat one egg even though you are not hungry. I can't. I just can't, okay? So I don't. If I'm hungry, I will make my meal. Usually it's two eggs. The rules say between six to ten eggs a day. Most of the time, I have only eaten four eggs for the day and I Sometimes I do force the six eggs, but most of the time it's four eggs for me for the day. Another rule that I do not follow is that the eggs must be pasteurized. I just buy the regular eggs from my store and that's what I use. Another rule is, and this rule um, I get a lot of questions from me because of how I have worded in the rules or maybe how it's been worded in the rules. It says up to three sodas daily. This does not mean you have to drink the three sodas daily. This means that you are allowed to drink the three sodas daily. Me, personally, I try to limit my consumption of sodas. So I try to drink as least possible soda as I can. Okay, and I have noticed that during the egg fast is when I drink more soda. So I have tried to limit that. I try my best to only drink three sodas for the entire six days egg fast okay so that is what i'm going to try to do this time as well it took me two years after i started my keto journey to even consider doing an egg fast i always thought it was crazy and that it was no need for it but i was very curious and i finally decided to do it i let me tell you that i am very happy that i did do it the first time that i did my egg fast was a year ago and i enjoyed the overall experience and how i felt 
that I decided to do a monthly egg fast. Maybe about five months after doing the egg fast monthly, I came to a point where I just couldn't. So I did take a break from doing egg fast for a while and now I am back doing the egg fast. I myself highly recommend it. I do have a highlight in my Instagram stories in my highlight in my profile. It talks about my first egg fast experience and other questions that were asked that I was able to answer. Now, this goes for the women. I was able to feel really good during the egg fast and the first time that I did the egg fast was when I was on my menstrual cycle. I noticed a huge difference of how I felt during the egg fast than the other months when I was not doing the egg fast. The thing is that egg fast gets you into ketosis and ketosis just does a lot of good things for your body. So that's one thing. It helps you with your menstrual cycle, with your PMS symptoms. It just helps overall with the cravings, with how you feel. At least it helped me and that is the reason why I really enjoyed it and decided to do monthly egg fast. So yes, that is why I do an egg fast to feel better during my menstrual cycle, but also for a keto reset. The egg fast always helps me get back on track. I am human, I am imperfect, and there are several times where I have a non-keto meal, maybe sometimes two in a day, that just throws me off big time, throws my body off, and then you know how it goes, you just want anything. The egg fast just gets me back on track, and then I'm on track for a long time again after that. Electrolytes. It is very important that you take your electrolytes. Whether you're doing an egg fast or not, it's very, very important to take electrolytes daily. Daily. I myself just take Sole water every single morning. And I also have a highlight in my Instagram profile that has to do with Sole water and how you do it and the benefits to it and how you take it. During an egg fast, I sometimes even take them in the evening before I go to sleep. This is to avoid the keto flu. This is to avoid any cramps. I have noticed that during an egg fast, at night, my legs tend to want to cramp up. So that is why I have decided to take the electrolytes, my solid water in the evening as well. They have other types of electrolytes. Sometimes I just take pink salt in my hand and I just eat it off my hand. But they, they do sell some electrolytes. Um, one is called Goatuma. One is Keto Beam and they have other electrolytes. You can Google Keto Electrolytes or just electrolytes and try to take that. I recommend that you don't take like Powerade Zero for electrolytes. There are other sources and for me, pink salt, soleil water just works perfect. Another huge recommendation is a variety of meals. Please do not just only eat hard boiled eggs. You will be fed up by the second day. I mean, if you really, really enjoy hard boiled eggs, then it's up to you. But my recommendation, I totally suggest that you do a variety of meals. Nowadays, there are so many meals that you can do with just eggs and cheese. So this time, I will be adding some desserts. I usually don't, but I'm going to try to add some desserts here that I have um, recently found on Instagram. And I will also be doing a variety of meals. I usually do the same, maybe four meals and rotate them throughout the egg fast, but I'm going to try to make new meals that I have never made that I recently took note of and I made a list of the meals that I want to make and I will be showing them to you as I go day by day. We are in day one and we're going to check my glucose levels first. We are, I am at 92. This is the beginning of the day, the beginning of the egg fast. This is before I even take my sole water. Now I'm going to check my ketone levels. I am hoping I am at least at what? Maybe a little bit under one, but I hope I don't come out with the reading of low. Let's see what it says. I am at 0.5, that's not too bad. First things first, every single day, we need to take our electrolytes. I use Sole water. This is just pink salt with water. I do have a highlight in my Instagram profile on how to make it. Here I have a clear cup with just water and a plastic spoon. I use the tablespoon 
measuring spoon to add the sole water in my cup of water. I usually add a tablespoon. You can start off with one teaspoon. And I did start off with one teaspoon and then I am now at three teaspoons which equals one tablespoon. My husband does two tablespoons. Then you just stir it and drink it before anything else every single day. Once the sole water is done, I'm going to be making my Bulletproof coffee every single morning. This is my first meal. This is what I drink every single morning before I have my first meal. You do not have to take the Bulletproof coffee every single morning for you if you don't even drink coffee or you just don't want to eat, drink coffee and you rather have a meal instead. This is my coffee. I have two cups of coffee in there. I'm going to add a tablespoon of butter. This is the butter that I use. This is a salted one. They also have unsalted. I usually use a salted one, but sometimes I switch it up because I don't want salty coffee. I always add vanilla. I don't usually add MCT oil or coconut oil. I am going to add it for this week. I am using this one that I bought at the store, but I also buy one that's in a bottle. Sometimes I just use regular coconut oil. I'm going to add a splash of heavy whipping cream. And I usually heat up my, my milk, my heavy whipping cream and butter. But right now I want to start drinking my coffee already. So I don't want it that hot. So I'm not going to heat it up. Um, sweetener, I use Swerve. I add two tablespoons. I don't know if that's too much. That's how I like my coffee. And then the little frothers to mix it all well. Whoopsie. This is just going to blend everything together. And there you go. That's ready for me to drink and continue on with the day before I make my first meal. I don't know what it is that I always start my egg fast, my second meal, because my first meal is the Bulletproof coffee. I always start my egg fast with eating scrambled buttery eggs. I don't know what it is. It's just it just tastes so good and I don't know if it's because of the simplicity of it because I don't want to become overwhelmed. I don't know, but it's just the easiest thing to do. I just cook my eggs in two tablespoons of Kerrygold butter and that's it. And for meal three for day one, we're going to make cream cheese pancakes. I really wanted some egg loaf and then I wanted some French toast, but we are running short on time and I'm going to make these pancakes because they are so simple and so easy to make. So to make the pancakes, we need two ounces of cream cheese. We need two eggs. And if you notice, I did put 
a little bit of coconut oil on my cast iron skillet so it can get ready for when I blend all my ingredients together. I am using Swerve. I added one teaspoon of it. That is the sweetener that we use. You're going to need one fourth teaspoon of baking powder. We're going to need half a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're also going to need one fourth teaspoon of vanilla. You can use whatever blender you want to use. I am using my immersion blender. It's just really easy to just blend, but if you don't have one, you could easily use your blender. They each take about three minutes to cook on one side, and when you flip them over, it takes about one minute to completely cook. Here I have my stack of pancakes. I am topping them with Kerrygold butter. As you can see, I made five pancakes. I don't know if I will finish them all. This is the syrup that I use. I use the Kerrys that I buy at Walmart. And day one is over and for my last meal I had scrambled butter eggs again just because I was just running short on time and I was hungry and that's what I made really quick. And the total of eggs that I had today was six. So we are now starting day two. I already have my bulletproof coffee so now my second meal is this egg chalupa. We start off with pouring one fourth cup of shredded cheese onto a non-stick pan it has to be non-stick i've made the mistake of using a pan that's not non-stick so it all got stuck to it we're gonna let that bubble and let that toast for a little bit and then we're going to crack two eggs on it i have decided to only do two eggs Once you crack the eggs, you can season it with whatever you want. You can use pepper. I'm going to use Trader Joe's chili lime. You could also use um, everything but the bagel seasoning or whatever favorite seasoning that you like. Now we're going to cover this and let this cook for a while until the white and the yolk cooks a little bit longer like this. I sometimes like to have the yolks less runny. Sometimes I like them to be more cooked, but this time I'm going to leave it like this. I do like to run my spatula around it to release it a little bit from the pan because it does get a little bit harder. It gets stuck to the pan. Now, you can flip it over and let the yolks cook a little bit longer on that side, but I'm not going to flip it today. This is how I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to let them cook a little bit more, and then I'm going to serve it on my plate and fold it like in, so I can hold it like a taco. Day two meal three will be egg salad and cheese crisps. So I am going to make the hard boiled eggs. I am using my instant pot. You need to make sure you have the, the trivet inside your instant pot in a cup of water. And I do make a dozen of eggs at a time so that I can share with my husband. And so I could just have any some available for throughout the egg fast. We're going to close the lid, make sure it's on ceiling, and we are not going to use this egg option. We're going to set it to four minutes. 
Once they are done, we're going to take them out and put it into a dish with ice water and let them sit there for about five minutes. I find this is the easiest way to peel my eggs. I let them sit for about five minutes and then I just come and I peel the eggs and they're just so easy to peel. I remember I used to have such a hard time peeling hard boiled eggs until I started making them in an instant pot. I do break the bottom of the egg first. See how nice it is? See how nice it, it came out? I break the bottom of the egg first where the little bubble, well, there's like a little bubble that forms at the bottom of the egg and it leaves an, em an empty space. So you break that and the shell just completely just comes off sometimes. So here I have all my eggs ready for the egg salad and ready for the week. Okay, let's get ready to make the egg salad. I am making a single serving. I am using only two hard boiled eggs and I usually separate the egg yolk and mash that and then I cut up the whites. But right now I'm just cutting everything together. So I'm just gonna cut both of the eggs and we're gonna start adding all the ingredients after that. Let's start off with adding some mayonnaise. We're going to need two tablespoons of mayonnaise. I am using the store-bought mayonnaise. You can of course use one that you make at home but I'm just making it easier on myself and this is the mayonnaise that I use. We will be adding some mustard. This is optional. If you do not like mustard, then you don't use it. We're gonna add one teaspoon of mustard. I just feel like it adds that extra flavor. And something that I recently found out is that I also like pickle juice in my egg salad. So I'm going to add one teaspoon of pickle juice. This is also optional as well, if you like pickles. We're going to just add some black pepper to give it some taste, some salt, and you can add any other seasons like the one that I have here, the everything but the bagel seasoning from my store. And now we're just gonna mix it all up and get ready to put in the refrigerator to chill for a little bit. And by the way, I have not finished my coffee. It is in the back, if you notice it there. Um, I am still drinking my coffee at this point. And now it's time to make the microwavable cheese scripts. I am so glad that I came across this method on Instagram. Here I have my microwave plate and I'm laying down some silicone cups. This is the easiest method that I could think of that I have ever done. So I'm just laying some silicone cups and I'm going to add some cheese on those. And the less cheese you add, the crispier it will be. This is the cheese that I'm using. I'm using the Mexican blend, blend, but you can use whatever cheese that you want. I have used other types of cheeses as well. I have used Kobe Jack cheese. I have used mozzarella cheese, but for today I am using this one. Um, the more cheese you add, the thicker they will be and the less crunchier they will be. Now I am using the one tablespoon measuring spoon and if you notice I'm not even fiddling it up with a tablespoon so I do want mine fairly thin. I want them crunchy and I don't want to use as much cheese. I don't want to be consuming a lot of cheese on the egg fast. Now you can season them with whatever flavor you want. I am using chili lime again because that is what I have available. I am also going to be using everything but the bagel seasoning and I'm going to leave some without any seasoning. It is now time to microwave them. You're going to microwave them for a minute and a half and then you're going to check them. This is how mine came out after a minute and a half. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay a plate with a napkin and I'm going to put all the cheese scripts there so the napkin can grab the excess oil and the cheese scripts can harden. It doesn't really take much for them to dry. By the time you're done with the last one, they, the first ones will probably be already dry and ready for you to eat. So I was not hungry after having my last meal, after having meal three. So my total eggs for the day was only four. Day three meal two was supposed to be a breakfast truffle sandwich, but I had a truffle sandwich because I did not have time to make 
the chaffles before I headed out to church. So I only made my egg round and I took a slice of cheese and this is my lunch. Day 3 meal 3 is going to be egg drop soup. We're going to start off with boiling 2 cups of water or broth. Now if you did notice, I did use the Kerrygold garlic and herb butter. You will need 2 tablespoons of butter or ghee. We're going to add some salt and pepper to taste and 1 8 onion powder. 1 8 teaspoon. I did not add 1 8 teaspoon to the recipe but it's 1 8 teaspoon onion powder. Now I'm going to omit the 1 8 teaspoon garlic powder because of the butter that I did use which is garlic and herb. Now we're going to mix this well and we're going to just let it boil and simmer together. Once it starts boiling, then it is time to add the eggs. I already have my eggs ready. I'm just going to pour it in and give it a little mix. And it is basically ready in, in a few seconds. The egg cooks really quick after the water starts to boil. Now you want to go ahead and taste it before you serve it. You might have to add some more salt, some more onion powder. In my case, I needed to add a lot more salt. And I'm going to also add some onion powder as well. And some pepper too. Now let's just stir this all together so we can go ahead and serve it in a bowl. If you do have this for flavor, you can add coconut aminos. It just gives it, gives it a little bit more flavor. Now we are ready to serve it. And I am also going to add this salsa valentina. Just gives it a little bit more spicy flavor. I like spicy not too much, but I like how this tastes with the egg soup. Now we are ready to enjoy this soup. Day 3 meal 4 will be cinnamon rolls. Let's start off with adding butter to our pan that is preheating because we are going to make a pancake. So. For this pancake, we need two ounces of creamy cheese. We need two eggs. I'm using this cup so I can use my immersion blender and just pour it out of there onto the pan. I'm going to just blend it all together. My immersion blender fits perfectly in this cup. And from here, I'm going to pour the batter onto the skillet to make one big pancake. It takes about three minutes for the pancake to be cooked on one side. We're going to flip this and then cook it on the other side. That'll take about another two minutes. Meanwhile that is cooking, let's go ahead and prepare this mixture that will go on top of the pancake. It is one tablespoon of butter with some cinnamon, one teaspoon of erythritol. We're just going to mix that really good. And this will be added to the top of the pancake. We're just going to spread it evenly, just make sure you pour all of it on.
and we're going to now roll it up as carefully as you can so it doesn't tear. Once it is rolled, we're going to cut it into pieces to kind of form the cinnamon rolls. You can cut them as thick as you want, as thin as you want. This is up to you how you want to cut them. I can, you can see I cut, them, I cut them into small pieces. Now let's go ahead and make the frosting for the cinnamon rolls. All we need is one ounce of cream cheese. Make sure it is softened so we can mix it well. And one teaspoon of powdered sweetener. We're going to mix that well and then we're going to top it our cinnamon rolls with this. You could also just spread it over the entire pancake like that or you could just arrange the cinnamon rolls and spread it on top of each cinnamon roll. It doesn't have to be perfect, just spread it over it and just enjoy it. You could also top with some cinnamon or you can just eat it like that. I wanted to top it with syrup as well, but I didn't. Day three has ended and I ate a total of six days today. Now let's move on to day four, which is transition day one. We finally get to have something other than just eggs and cheese. So for my first meal, day four meal two, I'm going to have a chaffle burger. I'm just cooking my beef patty and I'm going to get ready to make my chaffles. Now for the egg fast, I'm going to use two eggs and half cup of shredded cheese. I am using two eggs. I usually use one, but I'm using two eggs so that I can get my eggs in for today. You could also season it with salt and pepper or any other seasonings that you like. You're just going to mix the ingredients together. Make sure your mini waffle maker is preheating. And you're going to pour half of the batter in the waffle maker. Now note again, I usually only use one egg and one fourth cup of cheese to make two chaffles. Today I used two eggs for the egg pass and if you can see I am making a huge mess. Plus I am also using a small plate which I usually use a big plate. Or I set a napkin on the bottom or a piece of parchment paper so I don't have such a huge mess. We're going to let that cook. I usually cook it for about 5 minutes. If you can see this, I am making such a huge mess. I usually This usually doesn't happen to me. I Like I said, I usually only use one egg to make two chaffles. Right now I'm using two eggs to make two chaffles. So we have a little bit of overflow here. Five minutes have passed. I do like mine crunchy so I let them cook for about five minutes. And now we're going to pour the second part of the batter to make our second chaffle. Same thing, making more mess here. Just spread the batter evenly over the waffle maker to hopefully make an even chaffle. My patty is ready to be added to my chaffle. I'm just going to get a slice of cheese and then I'm going to take out my other chaffle from the mini waffle maker and complete my burger. I am adding a little bit of condiments during this egg fast so I am using a turner sweet ketchup to give it some flavor. There you go, now I will definitely enjoy this meal. Day 4, meal 4 will be coffee mousse. We are going to start off with 1 egg yolk and a tablespoon of mascarpone cheese. If you notice, I am using what's called a double boiler method, which means I have that red pan with some water in there boiling. And on top, I added this dish so that the water does not touch the ingredients. We're going to add one teaspoon of instant coffee powder and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is the sweetener that I use. We're going to add one and a half tablespoons of powdered erythritol. We're just going to mix that well. I think it would be better if I would have used my whisk, 
but it's still working well. So let's just mix this well and continue the process. Now it's time to beat the egg white. We have separated the egg in the beginning. The egg yolk went with the mixture over the heat and now we're going to beat the egg white until it is until it forms a stiff peak. Now it you can also use a whisk if you do not have a hand mixer, but I'm pretty sure this would just be a little bit more quicker since it is taking quite a while to get into the consistency that we need. Once we have it at the consistency that we need, we're going to pour the warm mixture over the egg whites and we're going to fold in the ingredients. Try not to over mix it, just make sure everything is well incorporated. This is smelling so good. I have never made any mousse in my life and this just looks and smells so good. This is how it looks. This is how it came out and it is now time to put in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes before you serve it and eat it. Day 4 meal 3 was egg salad again with only one egg and some cheese crisps. So total eggs for the day was 4. We are now at day 5. This is transition day 2. And for my first meal which is after my coffee I had some pork belly. For my third meal I had scrambled buttery eggs again and the total eggs for today was three now on to day six transition day three which is the last day for the egg fast okay so here we have one tablespoon melted butter i am using the carrot gold garlic and herb butter we're going to add a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream that's about that's about right. Just mix it a bit. I'm going to crack your eggs in there. We're going to sprinkle some cheese. The two tablespoons that's probably more and you're going to add salt and pepper onion powder oregano garlic powder or if you have an italian seasoning that you like and since i already added the garlic and herb butter i'm not going to add these seasonings and you're going to top with some crushed red pepper flakes. We are now going to bake it at 350 degrees for 10 minutes. I'm about to start making my baked lemon custard. But before that I wanted to show you how this came out. I did bake it for 15 minutes. I may need to bake it for another five more minutes because I do like my eggs running, but I think right now I want to bake it for five more minutes. Plus, I think I may have added too much butter. I don't know if I mistake, I added two tablespoons instead of one. Okay, I'm getting ready to make today's dessert, which is based lemon custard. I am going to double the recipe. I'm the recipes here on the right is for one serving. I'm going to double that recipe so I can offer one to my husband later on today. Here I have two tablespoons melted butter. I'm going to add two tablespoons of this cheese, mascarpone. You could use cream cheese if you want. I am using this one because this is what I bought for the egg fast. And I'm going to use it. Two eggs, two 
two tablespoons lemon juice. This is the one I'm using. It could also be fresh lemon juice, but this is what I use. Lemon flavor, I use this one from the Dollar Tree. Like about one teaspoon or half a teaspoon. The recipe calls for lemon stevia drops. I do not like stevia at all. Actually, my husband and I do not like stevia at all. So we're going to omit that, but you can add the lemon stevia drops if you want. I'm going to add, the recipe calls for one to two tablespoons of powder erythritol. I use Swerve. We only use Swerve in this house. And I am adding three tablespoons because I do not want it to be very sweet. And you're gonna mix all that up. I should have used my handheld mixer. Okay, it has been mixed. Now we're going to pour it in your little bowls so we can bake it. We're going to place it on a baking sheet. On that baking sheet, we're going to add some water and then we're gonna place the little bowls on top we're now going to bake this at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes okay the lemon custard is out and it smells so so good Oopsie. Um, so this is how it looks like. I'm going to chill it in the refrigerator. And for a few hours, I'm going to come pick it up before I take off to the meeting that I have. You can top this with some mascarpone cheese or some cream cheese and some lemon zest if you do have some lemon zest. I will let you guys know how it was after I eat it. It looks good and it smells really good but and I bet you it is really good. I'm going to make myself a single serving of coleslaw but I'm going to make myself a quick serving because I need to head out for my kids and I'm actually preparing this for my dinner. I'm going to pack it so I can eat it on the go for dinner before I head to a women's meeting that I have. So this is one cup of coleslaw. This is the one I use. I already I buy the already shredded cabbage. About two tablespoons of mayo. A splash of apple cider vinegar. A splash of lemon juice. Sprinkle some swerve, some sweetener. Salt and pepper. And you mix. Once you mix it well, you can chill it for at least half an hour. And there it is. I was actually not a big fan of coleslaw until very recent, about maybe six months ago. And now I really enjoy it. I'm going to have this with some pork belly that I cooked yesterday in the air fryer. I'm going to pack this up in a plastic container so I can put it in the refrigerator and then take it with me when I leave. Day six has ended and I ate a total of three eggs for the day. And now for the results. Okay, I'm going to test my my glucose levels. 
This is my husband's. I ran out of my strips from my Keto Mojo. Seventy-six. And now let's check my ketones. For my to check my ketones. Three point seven. Wow, I started at point five. So this is this is my usual result after an egg fast. This is day seven. Yesterday was my last transition day of my six day egg fast. So these are my final egg fast results after six days. My starting glucose was ninety two and my starting ketone levels was point five. Day seven, my glucose was at 76 and my ketone levels was at 3.7 giving me a GKI of 1.14 and I lost 6.1 pounds. Now what does my 1.14 GKI mean? If you see in this chart I am between 1 and 3 that means I am in high therapeutic level of ketosis. So there you go lovely people 6 day egg fast complete. Do I recommend an egg fast? Yes, I do. If you're going to do an egg fast, I ask that you go to the beginning of the video so you can listen to the recommendations that I have for you again. I will continue to do egg fast. I do not know if I will do one this coming month. If I do skip this month, I will continue on the following month because this is just something that I like to do either to break a plateau or just to get back on track. I want to ask you that if you're going to do the egg fast, that you comment down below that you're ready for an egg fast. And I ask that you please like this video, that you share this video with someone who's thinking about doing the egg fast. And I ask that you subscribe. And I will see you on my next video.